Hey there, YouTube. Today I decided to make a tour of our 1996 Ford Explorer XLT. This is the V8 model, and it's also two-wheel drive. I have done a tour before of this truck in the past, but I feel it deserves to be redone because it was done with my iPod Nano and quality was just awful in that video. We bought this truck in the summer of 2008, actually around the spring of 2008, with 158,000 miles. That was around the time when gas prices spiked up to around four or five dollars to the, to the gallon. And we actually stole this truck for $500 at auction. As you guys can see, it's in immaculate shape. It now has 197.5, somewhere around there. Now, as you notice, it has those FX4 style wheels from the mid 2000s Ford Explorers and F-150s. Well, the fact is these wheels are actually off my neighbor's 2005 Ford Explorer Sport Track, which he decided to put on aftermarket wheels. <laughs> Stupid. He put on, I think, 18s or 20 inch wheels. They, were, they looked like crap. And he gave us these 16s. Um, this truck originally came with 15 inch wheels and the ride was just more unstable. The drive shaft actually produced more vibrations, I guess because the wheels turned a little bit more. But anyways, I think he regretted that decision because his truck looked like crap and ours looked so great. Every time we always pulled up on our driveway, he always had like a real, like a frown on his face because he knew he screwed up. <laughs> anyways, it's his loss, but it looks great on this truck. Take a look in back, and please excuse the wind noise. The wind is really picking up. I will note that we bought this truck when we were still living in Connecticut. Um, there is actually no rust on it because this is actually a one owner from Arizona. So this truck only had a few months up north. And I'll show you underneath the condition of the chassis. You can see the muffler still in great shape underneath. Very minimal to no signs of rust And this is actually the longest we've ever kept a car before. I mean, usually in my household, we would keep a car for maybe a few weeks, a few months, and then my dad would just resell it and get another car at auction. But uh, yeah, this truck so far breaks all records. We actually purchased these Kumo KR21, these Solus KR21s. They are actually, where's the size? Where the hell? They are 235-70 16s. So moving over from the 15s to these 16s, the ride height never really increased. We actually widened the, the tire. You can see they are quite wide. The 15s were very narrow. So yeah, again, we preserved the ride height of the truck. And it also maintains stability. It rides silky smooth. We did add that bug shield on the front of the hood. The Explorers always look great with them. As most Ford vehicles. This one actually has keyless entry, five-digit code. And take a look at the interior. Cloth interior, obviously. And you can see how great a shape they are in. Um, this is actually an extension my dad made um, because the seat belt just sat so low and it actually used to bother hips. And he extended it upwards a little bit so it's not annoying anymore. You can see here this is for lumbar support. It actually compresses air inside like a little bag in here. Um, I call this the ass squeezer. This is very good if you like to have your ass clinched tight once you're driving. And it actually keeps you more supported. This actually came out in the Lincoln Mark 7, the LSC. So, these are sport style seats. You can see it has all the power you could think of. Back and forth, upwards. Very clean. It does not look like it has 197,000 miles. A 96 truck too. Oh, here's a key fob. It actually did come with one. Lock, unlock, panic. Very simple key. Now, we are going to have to admit that Ford did a pretty decent job with the interiors of these Explorers. They actually held up pretty good and they used some soft touches. I'm not going to say fit and finish is the best, nor the quality of some materials, but I guess they can be applauded considering 
they somewhat went downhill in the mid 2000s same thing general motors was just catastrophe in the 90s and 2000s and even in some vehicles till today but anyways let's talk about comfort these explorers were actually again very comfortable um, these seats have loads of thigh support. I mean, look, I'm just supported here. And they actually have thigh support extensions. You can see right there. They come right out. They are quite hard to pull out. <laughs> Not a very common thing in cars those days. Legroom also quite fine. The center console doesn't intrude or anything. Transmission hump is a bit on the fat side. Lots of shoulder room. That's not a problem either. You can see. The B pillar is recessed and the armrest is quite long, so even if you're the tallest of drivers, you won't have a problem. You'll always reach the armrest. The seats also very cushiony. You can see these are just couches. And the fabric, the upholstery that they use is just so durable. They really hold up very well, much better than the leather that they use because you could find many of these explorers with 85, 100,000 miles and the leather is just destroyed, but the ones with cloth interior are still in top shape. The torso is actually hugged and all. There's no headrest, it's all integrated into the seat, but it's just fine. Now, interior quality. Dashboard is actually padded, it's like a hard vinyl, you can see it is quite cushiony. And no cracks at all, and it's not warping anywhere. Take note, General Motors, change the dashboard to your Tahoes. Um, also, another comparison was the S10 Blazer of this year. The interiors would just fall apart, but the Explorers would still hold up pretty good. Though the airbag cover was very hollow, you can see they just put this coat piece of vinyl over and it's very hollow. But all of this is actually padded, it's very cushiony. Glove box filled with crap right now, but it's about average size and it's also lit. It's not damped, it just slams open. There's no sharp edge despite the lid being plastic. And I guess you can say it shuts evenly though, closes up a little bit more than it should over here on the sides and it opens up right there as you guys can see um, believe it or not this is actually all in good shape it's all plastic though the entire bezel it's coated with an anti-reflective coating by the way here's a radio only cassette it does have a six disc uh, CD changer in the center console let's take a look at the radio how it sounds and it sounds very basic which was also expected You guys saw what I mean. Power outlet, rear wiper, rear defogger, fog lamps, climate control. Simplest thing, blows ice cold still. My dad actually added this little LED light because sometimes we would just take off with the e-brake because the one illuminated over here really isn't that visible as you guys can see. But with this little light, you really can't miss it at all. So, so if any of you guys ever have that problem with these trucks or in any other cars you own, stick an LED somewhere and you won't miss it. Um, cover here, all plastic. It's a quite uneven. But hey, this is a 16-year-old truck, so with 197,000 miles, so it's not really that fair anymore. All of this is plastic over here, these cups. Now, this is actually this section here from a 2000 Mountaineer, because the original cup holders that these trucks came with, they were just side to side. They were just next to each other, and so you really couldn't fit fat drinks at all. And it also had, um, how can I say it, an ashtray that you just used to push up and the lid would just retract upwards. But over here, since nobody here smokes, and we also at times carry two drinks, it's much more comfortable. You could put the fattest 64 ounce cup in each cup holder versus in the old one, you couldn't do so. A tissue box holder, we've never used that before. And you can see the armrest is also quite different. This is very cushiony. Um, Ford originally used a very hard vinyl. Yeah, there's our hand sanitizer. Center console is jiggly, and the lid itself also is very creaky. CD changer for six disc, and this is how you slide out for the tissue box holder. See, it was full of dust. The original was actually cracked because it was a hard vinyl and it would just split apart and so my dad also wanted to make something cushiony because the original wasn't. So this was the end result and he went with the black one because it's less noticeable to look dirty and stuff like that. But yeah, the center console really is quite crappy though. They're all plasticky. But it still held up, as you guys can see. 
in this year, the 96 and 97 was very skinny. Ford fattened it up in the 98 model. Um, also, in the 96 and 97, the foam that they used inside, the padding inside, used to recede and it would just turn to crap, really nothing. It's all, it's like it's warped on the inside, but again, it's leather wrapped. It has cruise control. My dad actually covered up this piece over here to the cruise control on and off switch with this piece of vinyl <laughs> because the buttons were actually punched through. They were, they were just holes. They were functional, but it just looks so ugly seeing a big broken button. So my dad actually covered it up with this vinyl. And you could just feel right in the center of the plus sign and the negative, the buttons still underneath. It beats the look of before. Hazards up above, instrument speed wipers, steering wheel only tilts. This truck has a four speed automatic, by the way. Overdrive button. This transmission on the V8 models is actually the 4R70W, so it's the same exact transmission that the Lincoln Town Cars, Crown Victorias, Police Interceptors, F-150s, even the 4.6 Expeditions use. So this is a tough tranny that can go four or 500,000 miles if you take care of it. Though, they used to suffer in the 90s with torque converters, like um, they would shudder between third and fourth gear and overdrive. And that was usually the cause of using the old Dexron Mercon 3 fluid and not having sufficient transmission cooling. But if you would have used the Mercon 5 fluid, which is, the, which is the fluid that Ford utilizes now, you would have avoided that problem, but many people didn't know that. And so this truck did have the shuddering problem. We actually drove it that way for 15,000 miles. And so my dad purchased a torque converter for $99 at Advance Auto Parts. We filled up the truck with the Mercon 5 fluid and the transmission is silky smooth and shifting perfectly at 197K. Now the A-pillar is all plastic. You won't really see any uneven gaps because it's all one piece over here. It only overlaps over this other section, which was a common thing car makers used to do in the 90s. Um, same deal on the passenger side, overlapping over the plastics. You can see again over there. And towards and back, regular oh shit handles that won't go anywhere, they just stay there. Headliner is actually very plush. Ford was very good with their headliners. Mirror and vanity light. And they look very familiar, don't they? They're the same exact mirror and vanity light in my 2006 Honda Accord. And this mirror and vanity light is still made till 2012 on many other on many cars. I think it's the Nissan Quest or Lexus or Acura, I don't know. Even Toyota has utilized that mirror and vanity light. You can also slide it out and use this as a secondary sun visor. Garage door opener. Well, you stick the garage door opener in here, map light, compass, thermostat, it's quite accurate, 93 degrees outside, rear view mirror, old school tilt function, and mirror and vanity lights on the driver's side. I'll leave it down to leave glare reduced. Door panel coated with vinyl on top, perforated somewhat, plastic around this section, the entire thing. Instead of putting grainy plastic in the lower section, they put this cloth over here, a bit fuzzy. And you have the door pocket. It's lit. Armrest is padded with this vinyl. It's quite cushiony, but it's a little bit warped under here. All the heat and such kind of warped it out. Window lock, power windows. Driver window has auto down. There we go, worked. Door locks and power mirrors. Back seats. Materials do carry over, padded on top with this vinyl, this entire piece, padded armrest, and the same rather smooth plastic. At least it's not grainy though, give them credit for that. And here's the back seat. There's no armrest or anything. Some of these actually came with a child seat integrated in the backrest, believe it or not. Um, they also don't recline. Thigh support also wasn't a big deal, and they are a bit on the firm side. Let me at least sit inside so you guys get an idea. I had the seat adjusted to where I like it and legroom is just right where it is. It's just about to cram into the head, into the backrest, actually. You guys can see my knees right there, but there's still room. And thigh support, as I mentioned, really isn't the best thing. You can see my legs are just up here. At least they gave you rear AC. Let me focus so you guys can see. And it blows pretty good. You can adjust it down to the floor if you wish. You do have radio controls if you want to listen to the radio independently. You can stick headphones if you wish. Cup holder. 
So this is not a basic truck. Let me at least show you the backrests over here coming down. You'll see the garbage dumpster we have back there. We store all our shit. See, move that lever. The seats will go right down. And this was thoughtful. You can actually move the headrest down and tilt it. Already in 96, Ford was very thoughtful to make a tiltable headrest like that. And you'll have a nice flat floor, as you'll see. Let me focus in. And these trucks have decent cargo. We fit a huge love seat in here. It doesn't look possible, but it is possible. <laughs> Bring it up. Bring up the headrest. This carpet is from a Lincoln Town Car, by the way, for the back seat. <laughs> I always love the exhaust note in these. They're always throaty. You can hear it. Now, this section tilts the glass open. If you don't want to open the whole door. And this side for the entire door. And there's our garbage bin and the rest of the cargo area, which is very good for this truck, believe it or not. Oh, this net is sagging over here. Door locks if you want to lock the if you want to lock the truck from back here. It's all scratched. Because we use this thing as the old beater, we go to Lowe's and carry topsoil, grass, just about anything wood with this truck. Washer fluid for the wiper here and back. This bin is actually from the trunk of a Lincoln Town Car or a Crown Victoria. The insert, so you can store things, but we took it out. And we keep it in here to, to stash everything from groceries and such. It came out pretty handy. It was an exact fit, right between the wheel well, so it doesn't really make any noises or jiggle around. Here's where you insert the washer fluid, by the way. And here's the brake light. This is not actually an LED. I don't even know how to describe it. It's like a neon light. It's very bright at night. I wish I can show you at night someday. I also forgot to mention that the passenger side is also powered. You can see all the thigh support you want and lumbar. And also there's a power outlet to the side over here. We always forget about it. <laughs> Let's open the hood. I already cracked it open. The engine's going to be dirty. One of Ford's oldest engines is arrived from the 60s, the Windsor 5.0 liter V8. It's actually a 4.9, but somehow it caught on being marketed as the 5 liter. I don't know why, but that's just how things are. This engine was using the Mustangs, F-150s, the Lincoln Mark 7. Pretty much almost all Ford vehicles that had a V8 in it. very dirty. We had the recall done though, so it won't catch fire. <laughs> I've already revved out many explorers on my channel already. That's actually the heat shield of the catalytic converter, so that's not a problem. You can see, 197,000 miles, sounding great.
purely driving a truck with a torsion bar, independent front suspension, and leaf springs, so you're not going to expect something that handles like a sports car or something that you'll literally feel safe driving at when you're exceeding over 85 miles an hour. Of course, I've done it plenty of times, but you're going to be quite screwed in the case of an emergency maneuver. to say that it does drive better than the Nissan Xterra when it first came out, the first generation, the GMC Jimmy Chevy Blazer. Pacifica Cross. One thing I do love about these trucks is the throaty exhaust. You can just hear it in the back. Oh, goody. Sorry, for some reason my camera cut off when I was trying to do that 0 to 60 into traffic. But uh, just so that you guys can see how the truck is running. Pretty smooth, that's 70 miles an hour. It really could have used a fifth gear, but hey, that was 1996, so. The gears are quite long, to be honest. Just about going 73, and it's around 2300 RPM. So it's not too bad, you can say, my hands are off the wheel, and the truck is going straight. How often can you do that with an American car that's this old? Oh, there goes that crappy Durango. Ugh. No vibrations. The differential is nice and quiet. And again, without hands, the truck is going nice and straight. So YouTube, I hope you guys enjoyed this updated tour of our 1996 Ford Explorer XLT V8.